to today. Well, Mumbi, the long and short of it is about a woman who spent most of her childhood in the streets, and when enough was enough, she decided to uh, uh, pursue her chef uh, ambitions. From the streets to the kitchen, it could be quite a journey. I had, you know, very burning questions to know how she managed it. And as if that is not enough, she's decided to give up to the very uh, society she spent most of her childhood uh, uh, at. She, mm -hmm. she runs feed-in programs, counseling programs to street families. And you know, Mumbi, it is a time when street families have been quite abandoned, not only by the country, the mm -hmm. government, but also by us. And we can't blame it entirely on us because I understand the COVID-19 pandemic has had a toll order, especially economically and financially on most of us. But this uh, lady, determined as always as ever, has decided that she's not going to let uh, people who she once was wander off uh, into misery, Mombi. You can take it away. All right. Let's take a look at that story. Friday in mid-morning, we find Mary Wanjiru preparing a lot of porridge, enough to feed tens of people in her kitchen at her house in Mlango Kubwa, Mother Islam's Nairobi. You would wonder why the mother of four would be preparing a lot of porridge despite having a lean-sized family. We wonder too, but once the porridge is properly cooked, Wanjiru is joined by a small team of young men and women, some of whom carry the porridge that has now been carefully packed in 10 litre and 20 litre jerry cans. I joined the entourage with a 10 litre jerry can full of porridge in tow as we snack through the muddy Mlango Kubo alleys to a nearby free space at the heart of the Madar slums that is incessantly frequented by street families. Once we set foot there, the process to pour the porridge on each cup belonging to every street boy girl, man and woman kicks off just as the hunger pangs in the stomachs of these street families begin to strike. Feeding street families in Madare has been Wanjiro's routine for years now, a custom she says she has no plans to halt anytime soon. Wanjiro's soft spot for the street urchins is striking, and when we finally have a sit down with her, there is only one question at the top of my mind. What is the source of her affection towards a group that is often dealt a wide bath by the rest of the society? <laughs> Nilikuwa kwa street girl wakati ni kama miaka kuminatano. Nilikuwa nikiwa mdogo. Na hiyo wakati nilikuwa kwa street ni maisha ningumu. She confesses street life has been her only life until 15 years ago when she hung her unbearable street boots in pursuit for a life with a trajectory. And as we walk down the memory lane through her photo album, she tells me how the journey to where she is, a reliable, competent chef in Mathare, with an events packed calendar, has not been a smooth ride. Wow, how do you think those people are? Wengi. Wengi. At her prime, she says she will not tire to send the elevator back down. Her devotion is to create a better world for the people who are what she once was. Iyo wakati likuwa ngumu, lakini kama saizi pia wasichana, kuna vile tunawaongelesha, na kuna vile ninaezanga kuwashika mkono, na watoa kwa hiyo klasi yenye wanaona kama wawezi, na waonyesha wanaweza. Picha kama hii, she has as well managed to provide a roof over the heads of up to 20 girls who were once homeless. Among them is Evelyn Aviambo, once homeless and battling with drug addiction. Her life was going south until she met Wanjiru. The mother of two, Nawa Kofi Hoka, reveals to us the impact their meeting has had on her life. Lakini shiru alikuwa na nionge, alikuwa mentukua, alikuwa na niongelesha, na ni advice tule nezafanya. On the gender flip side, John Mungai, once a notorious pickpocket in Mathare, narrates to us how two events prompted him to shun thivari. Ilikuwa, tulikuwa yotu kosho sholo ingine na hapa, tukwa nyanganya mse mingine simu. Alafu kulikuwa githa ya saa kumina moja na nusu. Iyo simu wa subuhi, kube sikuwa na juhu mzee upika kwa kahoteli fulani. Kaenda haka niuliza, kaa naeza kuwa na kasimu yote na uza ni kamuambia nikonazo. Ni kamupatia, sikuwa na juhu ni yake. Apo wapona alikuwa na pika madazi, 
ndio na mjamaa ameingia na kikombe na mafuta ya mandazi anambia kumbe ni nyingi kwa mnataka kunidunga usiku mkinyang'anya simu yangu and amid the sharp increase in street families in recent times partly due to the coronavirus pandemic wanjiro hopes that the numbers will one day decline calling on the government to set up structures to save thousands of street families from the dangerous dynamics of the streets in a country where the streets families menace is rapidly worsening each passing day shiro as she is popularly known here at mlango kubwa in madare has devoted her life towards giving back to the very society that nurtured her at a very tender age and in as much as the impact in her own words is not as big as she will want it to be she says it's still a step towards the right direction david muthoka tv 47 at madare nairobi amazing and you know they say that misery loves company muthoka is you know that's not the case for wanjiro is it well it's definitely not the case for wanjiro and def we have to give it to her for being the chef with a big heart she doesn't earn much definitely and the much she earns in this case almost all of it is spent on you know elevating the lives of these people who we definitely most of us and most of Kenyans turn a blind eye to turn a deaf ear to, ear to rather mombi um, amazing mongi maina what do you think about the story I think Wanjiro not only has a big heart Modoka mm -hmm. but it is mm -hmm. such a big and a beautiful heart. Yes. Because you can imagine whatever she is doing not only feeding the street families but she is also partaking uh, in rehabilitating them. Yes. Look at that gentleman, look at that lady giving their life encounter and at the moment they met with Wanjiro and their lives were never the same again. So we have to give it up for her mm -hmm. for whatever she is doing and much much more in creating a ripple effect because when she is rehabilitating these two they will also go and bring other mm -hmm. two street children and then we will have a pool of former street children who are changing the narrative and shaping the country and so in a few years to come if we embrace this and we continue with these big beautiful hearts then we will not have any children in the streets of Nairobi and in other parts of the country. Muthoka. You know, Mumbi and Mwangi, mm -hmm. the streets are no longer safe, mm -hmm. as we might say, once were. And having somebody mm -hmm. who is constantly concerned about what is happening in mm -hmm. the streets, mm -hmm. uh, you know, making it a routine mm -hmm. to go down there and uh, spend a time with people who uh, are often, you know, ignored by the rest of the society mm -hmm. is, not a main f uh, is not a main fit. Sure. So definitely, uh, we have to give it up for for Wanjiro. And uh, Mudoka, I, I think Amazing. in, in, in Good Vibes World, mm -hmm. we have always said that it doesn't matter whatever you have. Yeah. A cup of porridge, it might right. be seen that something that is too little, but to those three children, it means a lot. Because probably that cup of porridge is what they depend on from morning to evening. And so they know tomorrow, at such a particular time, yeah. I go for my meal from Wanjiro, and uh, the, the lives of the young people uh, she's touching and the street children she deserves a shuja award because she's a heroine uh, and you know when Mwangi was also absolutely she does and it's really amazing to to see people doing you know such deeds you know uh, in a world where there's so much negativity and especially today as we commemorate uh world uh, you know uh, children's day so it's really really amazing mudoka totally